He did make the final cut of the 49ers roster, but wasn't able to regain the starting quarterback spot. That belongs to Blaine Gabbert, who has the worst QBR since he entered the league. Cap led San Francisco to two NFC Championship games and a Super Bowl appearance, but his performance on the field has dipped and he's battled injuries of late. Max, did Colin Kaepernick's activism cost him his starting spot? The answer is no. No, it didn't. And I know, I know how that sounds. It sounds naive, right? Like, oh, you don't, you don't get it. This is the way it works if you stand up. And actually, in this case, no. And I realize here we are on Labor Day and the history of just like leaving race and protest aside, the history of just labor organizing to stop being exploited is rich in this country. And, and that doesn't precisely relate to this, but certainly Colin Kaepernick falls in the worker part, not management here. Um, but no, he is not being exploited or manipulated uh, by being kept on the roster, but not given the starting job. I don't think this is a political thing at all. If you review it, he lost his job last season. He lost his starter's job last season, not this season. The question was, would he stick on the roster this season? Remember, before the season starts, he asks out. So then the question was, wow, he's in real decline. He already lost his job. There's a new coach. He wants out. Is he even going to have the locker room? Then he shows up skinny. And, and Chip Kelly on the record's like, he's really under his playing weight. He's got to get his weight up. Literally. Then he's talking about a dead arm, which to me says, wait, is he injured in some way that we don't know about? What do you mean dead arm? He can't throw the ball all of a sudden. And then comes the protest. Still doesn't have the job when he protests. The question was, would he be kept on the roster? Stephen A., the answer is yes. The man is still on the roster. Why would you keep a guy on the roster? That creates the distraction if you don't plan on getting use out of him. So you're creating the maximum distraction for the minimum reward? That doesn't make sense to me. He's on the roster because at this moment, I think Chip Kelly believes he's their second best quarterback. I believe at some point this season, maybe before even the halfway mark, Chip Kelly will believe if Kaepernick is healthy, that Kaepernick is in fact their best quarterback, and he will win back the starting job. But no, his not having it now is not about his protest. I believe you're wrong. And I believe you're wrong because of two reasons. Um, that would happen to be Chip Kelly and Trent Baalke. Now let's take into consideration. I want to make sure that I emphasize Chip Kelly and Trent Baalke because under no circumstances would I make this kind of uh, uh, a proclamation against any other organization in all of the NFL. I'm talking about those two individuals. In the case of Trent Baalke, you have an individual who had a winning coach, and basically because of your personal relationship with him, you got you 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 partnered with the owner and got the CEO essentially to co-sign you basically getting in his way, sabotaging his level of productivity and throwing the franchise to the wolves at the expense of the fan base and the organization itself. That's the Trent Baalke we're talking about here. Also a Trent Baalke who wants to talk to the media as little as possible, who wants to engage in spin and manipulation as, as, as much as possible. This is what his M.O. has been. I don't know the man. I've never met the man. I'm just talking about what NFL aficionados have told me. In the case of Chip Kelly, I'm significantly closer to that situation. Let's take into account what, co what players accused Chip Kelly of, how he didn't vibe with them, and how, you know, his terms in terms of his, his personable uh, abilities and his ability to ingratiate himself with players, particularly of African-American descent, was suspect. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget about his unconventional tendencies, clocking what guys did, when they did it, how they did it, what was their sleep patterns, what was their diet like, who was their girlfriends, where did they hang out, et cetera, et cetera. These are the kind of things that Chip Kelly was known for doing in the midst of going 26 and 21, in fairness to him, as a head coach with the Philadelphia 76ers. Back to back, Philadelphia Eagles, I'm sorry, back to back 10 and 6 seasons, and then 6 and 9 before he got booted out there in, in the penultimate game of last season. Think about the history that comes associated with Chip Kelly. Think about the brothers who had something to say about their relationship or lack thereof with Chip Kelly. Then couple that with it being Colin Kaepernick, him taking the position that he's taking, him being very out front with it, not consulting with the team before he did it, creating this maelstrom of controversy, wearing the afro looking like a member of the Black Panthers in this day and age in the eyes of somebody like Chip Kelly. In fairness to Chip Kelly, 
Kelly. He did come on the record and say he had no problem with it, but that's what he had to say. Because what the hell is Chip Kelly going to admit? That I got a problem with it? That I don't like this distraction? That I don't like it being about anything other than football? Blah, blah, blah. He can't say that. Not with his recent history in Philadelphia when he's lucky to have a job in San Francisco. So that's what you have to take but into consideration. let's not confuse the what chronology. Okay. Go ahead. Let's not confuse the chronology because he'd already lost his job. Look, if Chip Kelly's hubris, if you want to talk about that, it's about more than anything the impression that he thinks his system and his strategy is it. more important than the actual pieces on the chessboard. That those guys are more interchangeable than they are. And at the moment, he believes Gabbert's the best guy to run his system. But he said Kaepernick's got to get his weight up. I take that to mean when he does, well, if he gets well, back to being Cap, he got the job. Yeah. But, but, but your argument is about football. My argument is, is that Chip Kelly has a history of, of making football decisions based on what most of us would perceive to be non-football matters. I don't trust him yet. So because of that, it's not beyond the pale that this had something to do, not everything, but this had something to do with influencing his decision, and I'm rolling with that. The news would be if Cap got the job. The news that Cap doesn't have the starter's job, that's not news. The news would to be, Blaine oh, Gabbert, Cap won 8 back and 27, the job. 8 oh. and 27, Blaine Gabbert. Right, uh, Blaine so, Gabbert Listen, stinks, you and I are on the same Chris page Hardin about that, but not the, not, not the Niners. Gentlemen, we got to agree to disagree on this one. By the way, President Barack Obama says Kaepernick has the right to protest. And you'll see the Niners host the L.A. Rams in the nightcap of our Monday night football doubleheader. That one on ESPN. The earlier game is Stephen A. Steelers at the Redskins. One of the best point guards in the NBA in this offseason. He was paid like it, signing one of the most lucrative deals in NBA history to stay in Memphis. We welcome Grizzly star Mike Conley to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Let's start here with a hot topic this offseason, which has obviously been athletes and social activism. What was your reaction, Mike, to the Colin Kaepernick protest? Well, um, you know, first, I think that he has the right um, to protest peacefully. And that's what he's doing. Um, unfortunately, I think his message is getting kind of lost in the fact that the way he's doing it, uh, which a lot of people have, uh, you know, take offense to. So, but it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of courage with what he's doing. Um, you know, I have a lot of respect for the men and women uh, serving our, you know, uh, you know, for our country and uh, allowing us to be in the position that we're in today. So, um, you know, it's definitely a, a tough, a tough subject, but it needs to be addressed, and, um, and it's bringing some awareness. Mike, always good seeing you, bro. I'm happy for you. Get that paper. Uh, <laughs> but let me ask, but let me ask you this question: um, We've seen others step up, whether it be in the NFL, uh, the female soccer player, take a kneel, uh, but nevertheless putting some sort of, sort of effort forward to bring attention to what Colin Kaepernick's position is. Do you anticipate that that is something that could potentially take place come this N NBA season? Well, you know, I don't, I don't count it out. Um, I, I, I'm not necessarily one to, to know for sure if guys are, are going to bite and, and, and follow suit. But um, I think more needs to be done, uh, you know, than just aware, you know, awareness and raising awareness. I think we have to get out in the field and, and, and try to make change as well. So um, I'm one who's donated, you know, a million dollars to Grizzlies Foundation in order to help, um, you know, th throughout the city of Memphis and trying to raise awareness and do these things. But at the same time, it's not about money or, um, you know, how much awareness you can necessarily raise. You have to get out there and try to, you know, do it yourself and, uh, and try to make change. And that's something that all us athletes have to do a better job of. Hmm. Quite Mike, Max. Ryan Hollins was raving about your leadership ability, and I asked him for some specifics because he played with you, uh, for people who don't know, the veteran backup center uh, on Memphis last year. And he was talking about how if there's something to be done in the community and it involves shovels, you jump down into the ditch and start. And so the whole team follows you down there and, and, and does it, too. And that brings a kind of sense of community uh, on the team in Memphis. Why do you think it is, just switching to NBA for a second, why do you think it is that more players in your position, point guards in this point guard era, don't do stuff like that? Don't take the leadership role that that you've that you've act, that you've assumed. Obviously, well, you know, it's hard to say. Um, I feel like I feel an obligation to it um, in the position that I've, I'm in and the opportunity I have, um, the platform that I have as a, as a basketball player in America. Uh, all of us, you know, have a responsibility to our communities. Uh, we're role models, whether we, we whether we like it or not, and that's something that uh, it comes with. 
uh, of being a, being a professional athlete. So to get out there in the community, to embrace the role, um, really show your face, you know, not just on TV, not just speaking about it, but actually going into those neighborhoods and in those in those bad places and seeing uh, people who, who really need help and, uh, and, and, you know, promising, not just promising, but doing and, and, and showing that you really care about uh, their lives and, and, and the betterment of their, their communities. Mike, let me transition back to... you see Kaepernick... To, okay, go ahead, go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry, let me transition to basketball because we are talking to an individual uh, that, that played very good basketball for the Memphis Grizzlies for years. You just, I'm not telling your business, but damn it, it was in the press all of these months, $153 million, okay? Now, people look at those dollars. You don't have a championship on your resume. That ain't your fault, mm -hmm. but you don't have a championship on your resume. A lot of people look at the money DeMar DeRozan, yourself, Bradley Beal, and others have gotten, and a lot of folks are thinking the pressure is going to mount significantly because with the money that's been doled out to these players, you know, at some point in time, they're going to want it to pay championship dividends. I want to know if you thought about that and how fair do you think it is for Joe Public out there and, and Molly Public out there to have that kind of <laughs> attitude? Well, um, you know, at first glance, it, 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 all the money looks outrageous. But, you know, we're just the first. You know, I think in the next years, um, they'll see a lot of other people getting paid and, and we'll be, you know, yesterday's news. So, um, but for now... Uh, as far as the pressure, I think as athletes, we put pressure on ourselves regardless uh, to perform at a high level, especially myself. And um, it's an opportunity, you know, more so than anything that I'm excited for. You know, with that money, um, I feel like my role can change and I can do more and, and, and you know, really get out there and, and show people what I can do. Max, excuse me for interjecting, but Mike, I got to ask, I got to follow up with this. With the money that's being doled out there, what about those who look and question whether or not the incentive is going to still be there. Not for you, because your character speaks for itself. Not for the guys I mentioned, because those are good dudes with good character. But with the money that's being doled out there, people may question, where's the incentive to go out there and really, really produce when you know no matter what you do, you're going to get this paper coming your way? What do you say to that? Well, you know, I think all of us got here um, in this position, you know, through hard work. It wasn't given to anybody. You know, we all had to go through our, our sacrifices, our obstacles, and, um, you know, to get to get to this position, there's so many people want to be professional athletes, and there's so little, you know, amount of people in this world who get that opportunity. And um, I think that doesn't leave an athlete, you know, regardless of what you get paid. Some of them, you know, I can't speak for everybody, but some of them may, you know, once they get paid, take a back seat and, and relax. But a lot of, the, you know, the majority of these athletes in all sports, um, you know, really play with a lot of pride and integrity, and, and I don't think that'll change. All right. How do you stop Golden State, Mike? How do you match up with those guys? How do you stop that team? <laughs> um, first off, it'll be fun. I tell you that, you know, it's, uh, we're all competitors, and, uh, and that's going to be, a, uh, you know, the team on everybody's, you know, list. You know, we got to try to, you know, go out there and try to knock them off. It's the only way we're going to get out of the West is to beat or go through Golden State. And, um, and it'll be, you know, a, a tough task, you know, with uh, Kevin Durant joining and already the kind of, you know, the cast of guys they have there and uh, the coaching staff and the, the system that they play. It's, it's going to be a, a tough task. Shocking those two disagreed on KD going, whether they like the move or not. <laughs> Mike, again. I didn't like it. <laughs> Surprising, right? Love it. Thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate it. Again, Good congratulations you, on, the, on the new deal. Good luck this season. And uh, we, we appreciate it. And also applaud you on donating the $1 million. That's huge. Thank you very Great much. Great work by you. Coming up next.